Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about Pain Remains, the latest studio album from New Jersey deathcore crew Lorna Shore. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Pain Remains, quite possibly the most highly anticipated deathcore album of 2022, has finally arrived. It was a long journey to get to this point. The last few years have been interesting for Lorna Shore, to say the fucking least. While 2020's Immortal was, for the most part, a commercial and critical hit, it was marred by the controversies of then-lead singer C.J. McCreary. Even if it hadn't been, Lorna Shore, unfortunately, was not able to go out on tour to support this album, thanks to a fun little thing that was just kicking up around the time called COVID-19. Thankfully, though, Lorna Shore was able to persevere. They were able to sweep aside the drama and the nonsense and the bullshit, get down to business, really figure shit out, iron out all the kinks. They fired CJ McCreary. They brought in Will Ramos, released an awesome EP last year entitled And I Return to Nothingness, which paired some really brutal, devastating deathcore with a kind of elegance and bombast I would expect of some symphonic and melodic black metal. And the end result, Rocket propelled Lorna Shore to a level of fame and success that only a few other deathcore bands have really seen and have known. Like they sold out a bunch of solo headlining shows in fall of last year. They're preparing for a almost entirely sold out tour with Aborted right now. They're going on tour with Bring to the Horizon and a date to remember in early 2023. It is not at all uh, controversial to suggest that Lorna Shore are the hottest band in deathcore right now. And as such, it is fair to assume that Pain Remains is the hottest album in deathcore right now. Lorna Shore very wisely capitalizing on the successes of And I Return to Nothingness, getting bigger, getting bolder, getting weirder, getting more epic, getting more brutal. The melodic and symphonic black and death metal elements have been expanded big fucking time. There are synthesizers and horns and choirs everywhere on this thing. Really dramatic operatic sections and, and crushing breakdowns. I'm reminded a little bit of Demu Borger and Flesh God Apocalypse, but I would not at all be shocked to hear that, you know, the Lorna Shore guys are also big fans of another hot, young deathcore crew by the name of Shadow of Intent. There's more technicality and precision in the songwriting as well. There are a lot of riffs and guitar licks and harmonies and rhythmic passages that honestly would not be out of place on a modern tech def record. The aforementioned Shadow of Intent comes to mind, but also so does Fallujah. And on top of all that, you have the absolutely inhuman vocal gymnastics of Will Ramos. I mean, this dude is an absolute beast, and I mean that literally, not figuratively. Across this album, you're treated to an array of disgusting and, and ridiculous uh, vocal antics and dynamics. You know, you've got these, like, weird gurgling, uh, belching noises and these sneering, snarling squeals and these high-pitched screams and these deep, bellowing, earthy gutturals. Like, Will sounds less like a human being and more like a group of orcish or golem-esque creatures going to pound town on a wild fucking boar. And they are balls deep in that thing. Every hole filled. That boar won't be able to ride a bike or sit properly for at least a week. And all of this makes for a record that is simultaneously very exciting, but with time also slightly overwhelming. I won't get into the bad stuff right away, but I, I will say this. If you think this is going to be the best deathcore album of the year, lower your expectations just a little bit. The good news is, if you're head over heels in love with And I Return to Nothingness, and you just want that, but, like, more, and also louder, you're going to be fucking elated with this thing. You've got Into the Earth, for instance, which has this addictive little tech def, mellow def lead riff that is really intense, really fucking delicious. You have a lot of, like, crushing black metal percussion that also kind of elevates this to the cinematic heights and grandeur of bands like the aforementioned Demu Borger and Flesh God Apocalypse. Strings and synthesizers and operatic vocals swim and swerve in and out of 
the forefront, making this sound downright apocalyptic at times, alongside the incredibly intense, almost cattle decapitation style blast beats and, and rhythms and breakdowns. Tracks like Curse to Die, Apotheosis, Raph all follow pretty similar trajectories. A lot of very over-the-top, slightly melodramatic, but ultimately still very entertaining, blackened, symphonic, deaf chord, deaf metal, whatever the hell you want to call this. I don't know. I, I feel like we're we're starting to play the sub-sub-subgenre game, so I don't know. Let's just call it music, just to make life easy. You get the idea, though. However, as impactful and as powerful as all of these individual tracks are, in context of a studio album, listening to all of these tracks back to back, you begin to notice they're actually pretty repetitive, kind of one dimensional. There's a lot that is happening within that one dimension, you know, the mellow def, the tech def, the black metal, the def core, the operatic, cinematic atmospheres and, and such, but like, even so, there's not a lot of variety within the sound of Pain Remains. And as such, things get kind of stale and kind of dry pretty quickly, especially on repeat listens. Like, I was thrilled by Into the Earth and Sun Eater, and I enjoyed all the other tracks we've mentioned, like, individually. But, like, when listening to them all back-to-back -back in the form of an album, it just kind of got a little boring at a certain point. The very busy and compressed production in Sound Mix 2 makes this a slightly obnoxious listen on high volumes. I, I can imagine people complaining about being suffocated by this thing and just how like loud and like epic it is. And there's also the fact that unfortunately, uh, because this is deathcore, there are a slew of really, really simple cookie cutter breakdowns popping up all over the place. And my issue for the record is not that breakdowns exist. I'm fine with a good old fashioned, gnarly, stupid breakdown. My problem is that these breakdowns are really straightforward and really lame, and they consistently kill so much of the momentum that these songs build up. And these things are everywhere too. Like we barely make it two minutes into the album before Pain Remains decides to throw a slew of gravity blasts and gurgling vocals and ham-fisted riffs at you. And I am not exaggerating, folks. I timed it. It takes two minutes and 11 seconds for the opening track, Welcome Back, O Sleeping Dreamer, to just throw some dumb deathcore breakdown shit at you. And, you know... What a shame, because before that, you're treated to some really dramatic string arrangements and a pretty raucous, groovy kind of mashuga style riff and rhythm, and it's kind of great, and it's kind of awesome. But all of that momentum and all of that adrenaline is just kind of killed once we get into the dumb deathcore breakdown shit. I'm feeling a solid middle-of-the-road 3 out of 5 on this. I would say that overall I did enjoy this thing. I'm just not, like in a rush to revisit it. I'm probably more likely to listen to a lot of these songs individually or like listen to groups and clusters of songs in these little small bursts as opposed to listening to the full album again in its entirety. I think the reason why And I Return to Nothingness works better than this still is because it's only three songs, so there's not enough time for things to get overwhelming or to get tiring, to get boring, whereas this is, you know, bigger, it's a full album, and as such, whatever issues I might have had with And I Return to Nothingness are now on full display here. There's still a lot to admire about this thing. I mean, performance-wise, I think this is the best any member of Lorna Shore has sounded, not just with Lorna Shore, but with any project whatsoever. Will Ramos has probably one of the most insane uh, kind of vocal ranges I'm hearing in deathcore or death metal right now. So yeah, three to five. It's decent. I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I just think that there's still some work that needs to be done with the songwriting and with uh, the production, but I honestly have no doubt that Lorna Shore can further iron out all that shit. They've, you know, impressed me so far these past couple of years, so we'll see. I'm, I'm pumped to see where this takes them. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I'm not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown-y fucking immediately. And as always, you have yourself 
a fantastic fucking day.